The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you inspired your servant Luke the physician to reveal in his gospel the love and healing power of your son. Give your church the same love and power to heal to the glory of your holy name through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Zion. The first reading is from the 35th chapter of Isaiah, beginning at the fifth verse. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes and a highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. Here ends the reading. Please join in responsibly reading Psalm 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when people rose up against us. Then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped like a bird. From the snare of the fowler, the snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven, heaven and earth. earth. The second reading is from the second chapter, or is from Second Timothy, beginning at the fourth verse. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon, for Damas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for ministry. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter, verses 1 through 4, and the 24th chapter, beginning at the 44th verse. Inasmuch as I have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things that have been accomplished among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word have delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, having followed all these things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, that you might have certainty concerning the things you have been taught. And now from the 24th chapter, then Jesus said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms 
must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to the, of these things and behold, I am sending the promise of my father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. When he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. The gospel of the Lord, praise to you, O Christ. As I welcome the young and young of heart to the screen for the children's message, um, I forgot to just a reminder in the announcements that this is the third Sunday and we will be uh, celebrating uh, communion. And so if you need to, at some point during a hymn, prior to our uh, beginning of that liturgy to bring your elements to your place of worship, uh, please do so. But now uh, the children's sermon. Help, help. What do we do when we need help? Well, if we're at home, we might go to a caregiver uh, who's in the house, a parent. Uh, if we're in school, we might go to a teacher. Um, depending where we are, we might go to a policeman or somebody else that will help us. And those are all good things to do. And those are ways that God provides for safety and help in, in our world today. But we also hear about another kind of help in the Psalm at the very end where David says, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth the name of the Lord. Um, I've shared before, I'm not a Hebrew expert, uh, but in my study Bible, it talks about the Hebrew word Shem for name. And its meaning can be reputation, fame, or memory. And Yahweh's name bears his being and power to save. So it means that God's name is very powerful. And we get a clue to that when we see the name of the Lord and what do we learn about him just in this short verse, who made heaven and earth. That is a very powerful God who created all that is and gives us our very life and breath and those people around us who help us when we're in need. And so there's sometimes when even though there are people helping us, we may still feel very anxious. And that's a time when we can pray and pray to whom? To the Lord who made heaven and earth and to pray in his name. And we remember all the wonderful things God has done for us. And that helps us trust him that through our savior, Jesus Christ, he will continue to keep us in his care, even when we're going through challenging situations and we need help and others are helping us. And so I encourage you this week, um, when you need help and even when you don't, to be praying to the Lord and remember everything that he has done, giving him thanks and praise and taking all of your cares and concerns to the one who made heaven and earth. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Steady as she goes. Steady as she goes. Uh, this is a call. I, I think more about movies because I haven't been part of a ship's crew. Um, but uh, it's a call that we hear, and it's usually on a ship, a call fr from the captain to the helmsman. 
to keep the ship on course. And that helms, helmsman has quite a challenging job to keep his eye on the compass and the course ahead and also look in front of him to what is going on. And even if he's following that compass, the ship is on water. There are currents underneath it. There are wind, there's winds that may change the direction of the boat. And so keeping her steady can be quite a challenge to keep on course and to be watching going forward. Steady as she goes. Um, the first verse that we heard from Paul to Timothy today was, as for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Sober-minded, aware and focused on the task at hand, Barclay actually translates it as steady. Be steady and consistent in fulfilling your ministry of sharing the good news. Paul is also clear that it's not always going to be easy. He talks about enduring suffering. Now, when I put the lessons together for, uh, and I didn't put them together, I'm sorry. These are the appointed lessons for the festival of St. Luke. Uh, this verse five from chapter four in Second Timothy uh, follows some other words that will be helpful for us to get the full power of verse five. So here are verses one through four of Second Timothy chapter four. Paul writes, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be steady, sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of sharing the good news and fulfill your ministry. Um, that itching ears sounds kind of funny or going off into your own passions. Um, Eugene Peterson has an interesting translation in this passage. He writes, people are going to turn to spiritual junk food instead of the real meat and potatoes of what is being taught. And so we hear that Timothy is to keep on keeping focused on teaching and guiding the new and the older experienced Christians in his care. Uh, and one of the challenges for Timothy may have been um, that he was younger. Um, one scholar theorized he was anxious or shy and might have might pull back when people are challenging or drifting off in different ways. And Paul is saying, no, steady as she goes. You've been given your charge to share the good news of Jesus Christ, to preach and teach as you learned from your family and as you were taught by me, and do all of this with complete patience and teaching. Uh, so continue to be in conversation and to bring the clarity of who Jesus is. And one of the things that we lift up today on, a, on the festival of St. Luke is the clarity and love with which Luke 
documented the life and ministry of Jesus and the beginning of the church in the Gospel of Luke and in the Acts of the Apostles. And we even hear at the beginning that he's seeking to make an orderly account of everything that has taken place. And most importantly, he writes about who Jesus is, not only what he taught, but that he was the son of God who was completely obedient, suffered and died for each and every one of us that we might be forgiven a free gift of grace to us, but costly in the death of God's only son. And then the conquering of sin and death in the resurrection. And we heard today about his ascension and the promise of the Holy Spirit, which we know came at Pentecost when they were gathered so that the church would be able, as Timothy was to do, to continue to share that good news, whether it's easy or hard, whether we're at home or not, whether we're outdoors or indoors, whether we're in a store with our mask and at a doctor's office, that we can live and share and teach the good news. And that that is a steady as she goes <laughs> call to each and every one of us, even in the midst of all sorts of changes um, around us, that that call that we received in our baptisms to be part of God's family. And as we grew into that call, and many of us went through confirmation, that we affirmed for ourselves the promises our parents made, that we too would confess Jesus as Lord and witness to him. As Catherine so ably pointed out in our slide today, um, St. Luke is considered the patron uh, of a variety of fields, but most notably, we often refer to him as the beloved physician, and the title of physician uh, was um, mentioned in Colossians. That's where that reference is. And so today is a day when we remember the healing power of our Lord. Uh, it's a time when I'll remind us, and I know this is a, a source of grief, that we had a very powerful healing ministry of laying on a hands and anointing at Zion. And, and that ministry was a recognition of the healing we have in Christ um, that can happen physically. It not That is not always the case, but it can. When we pray for that physical healing, emotional healing, but most importantly, our spiritual healing. That no matter what, all the guilt and yuck that we carry with us that grieves us, that is healed and forgiven in our Savior Jesus Christ. That we can lay that garbage at the foot of the cross and be cleansed. And we, with our sinful nature, it's an ongoing process that daily we can die to sin, we can give that over and rise to new life and walk anew in our Savior, Jesus Christ. The healing we have in Jesus is also healing through death. It brings us through death to life in the Lord. And uh, I talked about that um, with the baptismal garment and the funeral, Paul, last Sunday, that we remember when we are at a funeral, it's not really about um, the life and death, but it's about Jesus and what Jesus has done for our loved one who has died and the promise of eternal rest in him and life to come. And also that that hope is for each and every one of us. It is the ultimate healing when we rest in the Lord. And so today we celebrate the healing that comes to us uh, in so many ways and in so many different ways now than um, it maybe has been as clear to us before. And I've mentioned before, but want to say again, 
um, just the tremendous job that so many in the healthcare field are doing when those of us who are loved ones cannot be present, um, nurses, chaplains, doctors, staff who are taking time to speak and pray with people who are ill in the hospital and be a spiritual comfort to them and an emotional comfort to them when the normal supports can't gather as we usually had. And today is a time for us to give thanks and to pray and celebrate and lift up those precious Christian ministries in this very, very challenging time. And I want us to take away this week that God is with us steady as she goes. And just a reminder, um, it's good to use a ship metaphor because we view the church as a ship. That nave that we worship in, that's a ship term. And so God is holding us in this ship and God is keeping it steady as she goes amidst all the current and winds and waves and delivering us. Remember, we're delivered through the waters of baptism. We are delivered from death to life in the Lord. And we can hold fast to these promises. And because we've received such great gifts and blessings, we are called to be steady as she goes in our Christian witness, in our serving the neighbor and loving God in Jesus' name. And we can do this through Christ who strengthens us. We can stand at the helm, look ahead, but also remember that way forward. Steady as she goes, today and always. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.